The third basic component of circuits to understand is the inductor. Inductance is probably the, the hardest of the three to understand only because the way in which it works is a physical phenomenon that is a relation that, that relies on the relationship between electricity and magnetism and how a rotating electric field creates a magnetic field and how that will impact the flow of the circuit, of the electricity through the, through the circuit. An inductor is a device that basically resists or has, has properties that inhibit the change in flow. The diagram, the symbol, the, the electronic uh, symbol diagram for an inductor is this coil, because that's basically what most inductors are. They are a coil of wires wrapped a, uh, in a circle. When you have electricity flowing in a circle like this, it will create a magnetic field in through the center. And that magnetic field has basically carries its own, its own momentum and inertia. And it will do its best to maintain itself in the face of changing current. And so the units of inductance are the Henry's with the symbol H and the term for inductance, the, the, the symbol that we use to describe the of a component is L. Now, this may not make a lot of sense. So again, let's go to the water analogy and it will make a lot more sense. An inductor acts like a water wheel in a pipe. What does this mean? Think of a heavy metal pipe. A heavy metal heavy metal wheel that is in the path of the flow of the water, and as the water is flowing steadily, this is going to rotate along with the water at exactly the same rate as the water, all nice and happy. So when the current is flowing steadily and the water is the flow rate of water through the pipe is steady. This is happily spinning along. But imagine now what happens if this flow rate tries to fall a little bit. It tries to go slower. Well, this thing is going to continue to spin. And it has a lot of angular momentum, right? There's a lot of inertia packed into this spinning device. And what it's going to do then is it's going to pull on the water and try to keep it going because it's not gonna be able to change the speed at which it's rotating instantly. And what this is going to do is it's going to force more water to flow through the pipe than it would if this device wasn't here. That is the water analogy to an inductor. It resists the changes in flow. Similarly, if the water speed went up instantaneously here, it's gonna take time for the wheel to speed up to that level and thus the current here is not going to, the, the flow rate here isn't going to match the flow rate here instantly. It's gonna take time for this wheel to spin up and thus for this to slowly ramp up to the same current seen here. Again, once, this, once the current is steady, we don't see any changes. It's nice and, and, and even and there's no disruption, no changes at all. So when you're talking about constant current, there is an inductor appears like a short. Right? It's just as if there was no, nothing there at all. The inductors only get involved when there's a change in the, in the, in the flow rate, when right? a change in the current. So I keep saying change and all these things. And thus the equations are probably sort of obvious. If we were to relate now current and voltage for an inductor, the equation is the following. V is equal to the inductance L times di dt, right? The rate of change of current. And we'll just put that as I dot. And so this is the equation that describes the relationship between voltage and current for an inductor.
And so, again, similarly, if we were to draw the circuit diagram for a simple inductor, one element inductor model, oops, that's not right, plus, minus, we technically would have to put a resistor here, otherwise the circuit doesn't make any sense. Don't worry too much about it, otherwise we can't easily define a current flowing through. We have a V, an R, and an L. That means we then can define some fixed I. And if V is not changing, then this simply appears like a short. But if V is changing, if V is, a, is an alternating current source or some type of changing voltage source, then L will absolutely have an impact on how current and the, uh, how current flows through this, this device and how the pressure changes across it as well. You can see then, for example, right, in the case of a changing current, suddenly you're gonna see a pressure difference between the pressure coming here, between the pressure of water here and the pressure of water here, right? There's going to, it doesn't matter which way it's going, if it increases or decreases, there will be a pressure change. If the, if, the, if the pressure of water increases here, right? If the pressure of water, if the voltage goes up, then you will see a positive voltage difference, positive pressure difference between, if you measure the pressure here versus here across the inductor. Similarly, if the pressure fell and went down, then you would see a smaller pressure here than you would here, and thus you'd have a negative voltage potential, a negative pressure. So that's the intuition behind how an inductor works and what it does with the water analogy.